uh, hello guys welcome to learnautomation.com this is Mukesh uh, in this video we are going to discuss uh, how to start with SOAP project and how we can start with our first test case so this tutorial is very important but before moving to this uh, tutorial you should refer my previous two videos which I shared earlier so you will get to know what is web services how to download and install SOAP UI so once you are done with the previous two videos, you can start working on the uh, real project. Today, uh, we have one agenda. So we'll talk about WDS file today because we are going to use this WDS file only in SOAP. Then we'll create a project on SOAP UI tool. Then we'll create test cases. And inside test cases, we will add some test step and uh, will finally get the uh, add assertion so we will send request today to the server and based on the response we will add some assertion so uh, this WDS uh, WSDL file I have taken uh, the definition from W3 school so WSDL stand for web services descriptive languages so if you can see we are talking about language it's a separate language over the internet which generally we use to communicate with the web services okay so WDL is a language for describing web services and how to access them and very important note WDS uh, <coughs> sorry WDS file is written only in a form of XML so if you remember my first video I was talking about the disadvantage of SOAP that it only work with WDS because it support only XML file that is the only limitation and uh, that is the reason SOAP is little bit uh, slow as compared to REST services. So I will show you directly uh, once we will uh, get this WDS, uh, WCGL file you can start working with the project. So uh, let me show you this. Uh, so this is the dummy WDS file which we will be using. So this file, uh, sorry this WDS URL you will get from the developer. So if you're working with an organization, don't worry about this. Once you get this WDS URL, you can start working with your testing. In this demo, I will be using this uh, WSDL file. So I will uh, give you this link. So you can directly import this WSDL file and you can start working on it. So I will simply uh, open SOAP UI. So here now you can select if you want to create an empty project since we are working with SOAP project so I will simply click on SOAP so it will give me this uh, two options I will enter project name is learn automation and let's give name so learn SOAP UI now it is asking because it works only with the WDS file so either you can click on browse or you can directly pass here so once you pass it will ask you do you want to create some sample request for all operation say yes why it is because you will see uh, they will extract some sample requests from this WSDL file <coughs> that will help us so uh, don't select this we will create our own test suit right now I need only that uh, sample request so that I can show you well so select the first option click on OK and it will take some time because it it will load the definition and all since we selected uh, initial options right so it is giving me two sample request that we will be using now so uh, just give a little attention here you will get two type of request so one request is currency converter soap and one is current uh, currency converter soap one two both are same but there are two versions so you can stick to the first one and here you can see we are getting one sample request okay so this request is nothing but a general uh, http request that we are going to send so if you double click on it so just a pure xml file and uh, let me give you a brief intro about this xml file so this is the request that we are going to uh, send to our server then server will return the response in a form of xml so in the left panel you can see all this will be the request in the right hand panel the response will come so right now we have not sent this request so we are not getting any response let me show you this xml in a separate notepad 
So now you can see here we are getting the first tab uh, tag called soap uh, envelope and this tag is getting closed here. So this is the main tag that uh, we will use here. Then you will find one uh, tag called body. So complete your uh, request will fall here. So you can see body started here and closed here. And this is the actual request that we are going to use. So here we are having to uh, one tag called web colon conversion rate. The same tag is closed here. So now it will accept you two argument. Okay, so this is the placeholder. So it will ask you from currency to currency. Do you want to convert some currency? So this WSDL file that we have uh, taken while creating project, it simply uh, converts some currency from one currency to another currency. So this is our simple application that's simply going to convert some of the currency. So this is just to uh, give you a brief intro about this XML file. Don't worry about it because these are predefined tags and you have to make sure what data you are passing from this placeholder. So I will close this not required. Okay, so let me show you how it works. So let me um, from currency if I say from USD to INR. I want to convert currency from USD to INR. So this is my request. Request I'm sending in form of XML and you can see here I'm getting one option called submit request. So if I click here, you can see I'm getting the response also. So left hand side I am sending request in the right hand side I'm getting a response. So you can see here response I'm getting conversion rate result 66.1635. So it's quite easy, right? We simply uh, entered some kind of data here and we are getting the response. So as a tester, you need to validate the response that is coming from SOAP UI. And you need to validate whether this data is coming as per our requirement or not. So uh, what you can do, say right now I'm uh, converting from USD to INR. Now let's say if I want to uh, convert from INR to USD. If I click on, see again, I'm getting some response. So every time if I have to make the changes here, I need to modify my previous test and I need to run a test again. So that's not a good practice. So what you can do in spite of taking this sample request, create our own test suit, create your own test case and you can create multiple requests. So this is just for example, Let's create our own test suit and we will do the same thing. So right click here. Okay, this is just a warning from McFay. Close it. So here you will get uh, one option called new test suit. I'm assuming everyone is fine with this concept. What is test suit? <clears throat> so test suit name I will give. Uh, uh, currency suit one. So this is our suit ready yeah, and this is the uh, UI parts, close it. Now let's add a new test case. Now suit is a collection of test cases, right? So I'm creating my first test case <coughs> that simply convert uh, currency. Close this, not required. So this is our uh, project created that is a nothing but our inside project we are creating our test suit inside test suit we created one test case now you can see here <clears throat> I can create three type of test here I can create test step I can create load test I'm cre I can create security test don't worry about these two because we are working uh, with test step as of now so right now you can see all are zero 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 because we have not added any test step so let's add a step and uh, let's uh, select soap request. Uh, we are uh, we will be working on rest as well as of now. Let's select soap request and uh, I will say USD to USD to INR. So now it will ask you which version you want since you are working with the first version. So click on OK. 
Okay, so this is you can see the test step is incremented to one because right now we having one test <coughs> that is <coughs> same uh, XML is coming because every time whenever uh, every time you will create a new test step, it will automatically detect the WSDL file that we have given while creating our project. So uh, let me give currency here. I will say current, uh, sorry, from currency USD to convert into INR. Let me click here. So it will send the request and <clears throat> it will give me the response 66. Now how we can validate whether, whether this data is coming based on our requirement or not. So before moving to assertion, so this is the XML format if you want to check the raw format. So if you remember in video one, we were talking about codes. So this is the code which is coming from the server. 200 okay, it means the request has been processed successfully and it has given me success call 200 okay. There's some other information which you will get once you work with, uh, once you click on the raw format. Okay, and you can see the total data is coming here. In the same uh, way, way, you can see here, we are working with this post and uh, accept this, there are some other details. And one important thing, if you can see here, I'm getting assertion. So right now we have only one assertion and that is the default assertion. So if I click here assertion, so this, uh, let me uh, select this. So you can see it's showing in a green color because the response that we are getting from server is valid. So it's, uh, are showing uh, completely fine. It's giving you green color. It means this test has been passed. But I want to add my assertion, like the value should contain at least 66. These values can vary, but my test says in the response, I should get uh, <coughs> 66. So this is how we can add assertion. If you can click, uh, if you click on this add symbol, you can see here we are getting so many assertions recently used that I used recently. Uh, there are some property content, like uh, you can use contains. So these are the pro versions. So right now these all are disabled. We can also uh, check like whether this does not contain this X path matches, X query matches. We are going to use this in the future videos. So as of now, let's use the click on the property content. You will not get this while working with the first time. So click on the second option called property content and click on the contents. Now I will check if the response contains 66, it means my test should pass. Right? So I can use this like ignore case. So right now it's not required because we will never get ignoring concept in numeric digits. So as of now click on OK. So you can see here, <coughs> this is also valid because right now the response which we are getting contains 66. So if you want to make changes here and let me give value 65. Definitely our test will fail because in the response we don't have 65. In response we have 66.1635. So this is how it is failing. So let me uh, make it green again. So this is one type of assertion like if you want to <coughs> give assertion so this is the default one which you will get. This is uh, we have added. So let's say if I want to give one more assertion, let me check uh, for this assertion. Let me add in. Um, <coughs> verify data, verify tag. And I will check uh, in the response whether this tag is coming or not. So conversion rate result. So if this tag is coming, so I will simply right click configure. So you can see I have three assertions here. So one is the default. Uh, if you want to uh, remove it, you can remove. So right now we added two assertion. My response should contain 66. It means my test pass. And I created one more assertion and I have given like if the response contains this particular uh, tag, it means my test case pass. So you can see here from the response side, I'm getting one tag called conversion rate result. 
And if you don't want to use this key sensitive, so if you give this C, it will work fine because even we have given a small C, but in the response, I'm getting capital C. So since we have selected this ignore case in comparison, it is ignoring. But if you don't select it, it will simply fail because as per our requirement, we were supposing, uh, we, were, we were expecting this conversion rate result in which C is a small, but in the response, it is coming capital letter. So let me configure to the capital C. <clears throat> okay, so you can see this is our first step and we have converted from one uh, currency to another co currency and we have captured the response as well. And in the, uh, once we get the response, we can add assertion. So we removed the default assertion that was simply capturing the response and we have added our uh, two assertion. So in the same way, you can create multiple tests and you can, sorry, and you can start working on it. So let me add one more step. SOAP request and let me give to INR to USD. Click on OK. So you can see now test step is uh, renaming to two because right now we have one more test step. Here I will say INR to USD. I will run it again. So again, I'm getting this uh, 0 0.01. So let me add one assertion here. Again, go to the same assertion window, click on this plus, and I will see property contain contains. If uh, response contains 0 0.0151, it should pass my test. So it is coming. Like this, you can explore and let me give some random data here. So right now we don't have any valid data. So definitely our test is going to fail. Our test is totally depend on the assertion. Let's see the response that is coming from the server. I'm giving some dummy data that doesn't exist. So if I click on run, so you can see, it is not giving me the proper response. So this assertion has been failed because as per our, uh, as per our assertion, we were expecting 0 0.0151 and we have passed some dummy data that doesn't exist. So my response is coming in a, uh, you can see big format and this is not the proper response. So my assertion are getting failed. And you can see here, this is uh, passed. So it is completely showing in a green color and this is in a red color. So this is how you can start working on a step. You can add assertion. So we have different type of asser assertions in SOAP UI. So we'll go through one by one. As of now, you can start working on this demo and just try to create the same as uh, we did now. Like this, you can add a step here again. And as an assignment, you can take any different currency and try to do the same. In the next part, we will see some more WSDL file. So right now we have only one this file. In the next part, I will show you a different uh, WSGL file and we'll try to add some more assertion. Hope this uh, project is clear for everyone, so this tutorial. Let me give a small recap. Okay, uh, we started with the SOAP project. While creating SOAP project, I have provided one WSDL file and we created this project. We created one test suit here after this test suit, we created one test case called convert currency. Then I added two test steps. So one test step was USD to INR. And I given USD to INR, I was getting some response and I have added two assertion here. So in the second test step, I was con con converting INR to USD. So we add, we have added one assertion. So based on the response, it is not matching. So it's failing our test. So in the next example, we'll take some other WSDL file and we'll see how we can add more assertion. So let's see whether we have covered everything, yes. So if you still have any doubt, you can uh, drop me an email and you can visit my blog for more information. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. <coughs>